It's a very difficult start to the season for Arsenal. Villa, Tottenham, City, all the way from home. Will it spark Arsenal into some business in the transfer window or at least speed things up because things have felt a little bit slow and a little bit like, uh, Arsenal are just feeling out of the market. Okay, but there's a lot riding on that start of the season. Some big, big games, some big, big trips and Arsenal need to be ready. There are other things that are going to be impacting Arsenal's readiness and how that fixture list looks. So in this video, we're going to talk about transfers a little bit later, but we're also going to start by analysing the fixture list in a little bit more detail. Let's show you it here. As you can see, courtesy of this graphic from AFTV, Villa away, Tottenham away, City away, and our opening five games is difficult you can hit the pause button if you want to look at the rest of the fixture list i'm sure you'll have seen it already but as you can see that in particular stands out as just a really difficult start for us from which they'd be wanting to build momentum there's a couple more things that are affecting momentum when it comes to this fixture list firstly july 2024 this calendar that we showed you in a video last week shows you that on the 5th and 6th of july the quarterfinals of the year is being played on the 9th and 10th the semi-finals and on the 14th of July, the final. On the 28th to the 31st, Man United and Liverpool will be faced in the United States during pre-season. So for me, players that get to pretty much Euro, you know, Euro 2024 football in July are going to struggle to really get up to match fitness in time for you know, pre-season or at least maybe that first game basically semi-finalists and beyond I'm thinking it's touch and go whether they're available for that opening game against Wolves or at least fully fit and ready to play now they might be I'm not saying they won't be managers and clubs do things differently as we talked about in the video last week but those are some key dates and we've got some players that could go really really far in that competition more on that later I want to touch now on the Champions League because if I show you here the schedule for the 24-25 campaign shows you it's very very different now we're going to depict this on the Premier League graphic Premier League fixtures graphic in a sec but as you can see there a lot more games in the league phase where we would have had six games we're now facing eight and as you can see there'll be a draw on the 29th of August to determine who we're playing for those games and it goes through all the way to January as well the league phase normally you'd have everything wrapped up in the groups by early December around that 10th 11th date you got there but no it will be carrying on into January and there'll be knockout playoffs in the 12th uh, sorry in February so the 12th 11th 12th of February and 18th 19th of February too so how does that line up with Arsenal's fixtures if we get that graphic up again I've now drawn a blue line to show you what games or when the Champions League is slotted in between Premier League games we've got our first game of the Champions League 24-25 campaign and the road to the Allianz in between Tottenham and Man City away so that could be an incredibly difficult uh, you know, start to the season, Arsenal straight in, and we're talking about being ready from the Euros, we're talking about getting players in, you know, we don't just want them ready and available, because yes, by the 30th of August, transfer deadline will be done, and so we'll have had our players in, but we want to get them up to scratch and ready to play as well, and so that could be really, really crucial, the fact that we've got such difficult opening games with the Champions League wedged in there as well, could be another part of the pressure that's being piled on. If we go to October before Southampton, in between two home games, Leicester and Southampton, we've got a Champions League game between Bournemouth away and Liverpool at home, we do two. And then this is the other really awkward placement between Newcastle away and Chelsea away is when it gets pretty awkward as well in November. Already that was a difficult November because of three Premier League away games and it could be even worse with the Champions League wedged in there too. Now if we go to December, luckily as I pointed out on the live news show that we did yesterday, Arsenal have all of those games, all six of those Premier League games in London which is great the home games obviously in London and then Fulham away Palace away Brentford away all there too that's great now hopefully we get a home game in the Champions League then and Arsenal don't have to leave the city for it was a really difficult patch for us last season and it's just an awkward patch of the season in general then you can see that after Villa at home and Wolves away we round up the league phase of the Champions League now in this lighter blue I've shown you the playoffs which will basically determine who goes to the round of 16 of the Champions League hopefully Arsenal aren't involved but there's a good chance in that league phase that they might be so they could have games after Man City at home and Leicester away as well because it would be a two-legged affair and then the two legs throughout the knockouts are split in in before Man United away after Man United away and before Chelsea at home and then either side of Everton Brentford Ipswich after Palace and before Bournemouth as well I believe I've got that right um, and then after Southampton so those are when the games are split in terms of the Champions League 
and when they're kind of being wedged into the calendar, which makes a lot of the calendar look even more difficult than it perhaps did in terms of the way certain games were placed, like having Newcastle, Chelsea away back to back, like having Tottenham, Man City away back to back. Champions League could make that even more awkward. Now, while you're waiting for the Premier League to return, you've got a big summer of football and the best way to keep up to date with it all is with Surfshark. Now, maybe you live in England like me and you just want to go on holiday and get some sun. I get it. I've seen more rain than sun this summer and it's June. But the Euros are going on. And with the Euros, you know, you want to watch it with the comfort of the pundits you enjoy, Gary Neville and Ian Wright, who are talking about it from the England perspective, or Cesc Fabregas, who gives brilliant punditry on BBC Sport around the team. With Surfshark, you're able to still travel, still go get your summer of sun, but actually keep up to date with what's going on in the football. And this is how, because Surfshark allows you to surf the internet safely and securely. Simply go on the app and select a location of your choice to access the web from. And this opens a world of content that may not be available where you are. And this is the summer to do. As Roger Federer said, no better time as a sports fan. You have the Euros, the Olympics, Wimbledon, and via BBC Sport, I'll be keeping up to date with absolutely all of it. And you can do the same using Surfshark. Now there is a 30 day money back guarantee, so you can all give it a go thoroughly thoroughly recommend it i'll be using it all summer use it all year anyway and if you want an extra four months free use the code james b in the link in the description below that's the link there as well but we'll put it in the description so you just hit the button go use the code and you can get an extra four months free with surfshark now let's look at the transfer window and why this could all be really really important to talk about in more detail because to understand what we need to do in the transfer window we need to understand who's potentially available first thing i want to show you all is the list of players that are involved in you know football now or yeah uh, international football for arsenal we've got declan rice with england saka ramsdale havertz rye you've got the whole list there you can see all the way down to the two gabriels magalais and martinelli who are playing for brazil at copper america as well just remind you one more time of the calendar we've shown here that arsenal could expect players to be involved in international football around the 5th 6th of july 9th 10th of the july and probably the 14th i'd be amazed if we don't have a euro 2024 Arsenal finalists there They're, I think there will be someone at least and that impacts the squad, squad pretty drastically as we go into the start of the season let me show you why firstly the players that I actually think could return particularly late because of the Euros or oh, and Copper America should I say are these players here Declan Rice, Bakaya Saka, Aaron Ramsdale, Kai Havertz, William Saliba, Gabriel Magalhaes and Gabriel Martinelli that is a really Really good list of players, right? Rice, Saka, Havertz, Saliba, Gabriel and probably Martinelli too are six starters for Arsenal. And I think they could all be away right up until mid-July. Arsenal will be getting ready for pre-season and will have games coming in the week or two after that potential final. And even if there's a semi-final, they'll play a lot of football, so they'll need the longer rest. That's where I get a little bit worried about Arsenal in terms of the actual players I have available for that start of the season where it's quite an intense start. If I show you the midfielders available for pre-season as things stand, Thomas Partey, Martin Erdegaard, Emil Smith-Rowe, Fabio Vieira are the only players that I'm very, very confident will be available, of course, unless there's injuries for the start of pre-season, most of pre-season, and could be expected to play a lot at the beginning of the campaign. But I put Jorginho in there too, because... If you'll have seen from my video on Friday, I'm predicting an early exit for Italy. Jorginho will probably get a little bit of rest and should be available to be starting games at the beginning of the campaign. If we look at the forwards, though, I think we're even more depleted here. Gabriel Jesus, Eddie Nketiah, Reese Nelson are the only players that... I mean, look, there's rumours of a sale for Reese Nelson, right? They're the only players that I'm very confident will be available for pre-season. Leandro Trossard, again, after Belgium's defeat, I'm not convinced that they're going to go too far. So he could be available for most of pre-season. But again, how much of it? I've got some, you know, some doubts there. So that puts pressure on the situation for Arsenal, everyone. That, you know, that's not a great list of players. And it makes you think we're probably going to want to add players so that we could be more ready come the start of the season because we don't want to rush back the players that have been playing international tournaments. Now, again, I don't want to sound too dramatic about it. Just because they're playing in the semi-final, they should be available to start the opening game of the Premier League season. But I'm talking about being match fit, match ready at your best because we've got big games coming up and you want them ready and at their best, not just available to play at 60-70% and getting minutes off the bench. We need them ready for literally Villa away on the second game of the season. And so when I look at those lists of midfielders available and forwards available, it makes me wonder, well, where do we probably need to prioritise? And it tells me up front, if anywhere, is probably where we need to prioritise. Now, this came out from uh, Get Italian Football News 
who are getting news and reports from Rai Sport in Italy, who are saying that Arsenal are expected to make an offer soon for Napoli's Victor Osserman. This would be really interesting, and for me, is where their priority should be. When you actually look at how the Euros might work out, it tells me that it looks to me like we're going to be much more depleted in the forward areas with Martinelli, Havertz, Saka probably all going far at the Euros and at Copa America. And actually getting that forward done first is going to make more sense if we're to get ready for the start of the season. But this came out from Gunner Blog and The Athletic saying that Arsenal need another midfielder to complement Declan Rice. Their indications are that they're leaning towards a number six rather than adding a number eight. He also says a little bit earlier, as you can see, that the focus seems to be on strengthening midfield, at least as a primary focus for first so do we focus on midfield first even though it seems with some rough calculations and estimations whatever that we actually might be more in need of help in the forward line as we approach the start of the season ultimately what this video is trying to do is understand the fixture list how everything else going on is going to impact the fixture list and what Arsenal might do in the transfer window to be ready for what's to come in a really, really difficult start. My ultimate prediction is that, to be honest, I actually don't see the fixture list impacting Arsenal in the window too much, simply because I don't think Arsenal are, again, that convinced from the reports we're reading, whatever, about what exactly they want to do in each position. They're thinking, well, we might add a six because the market's better, but what if Rice is better as a six and we'd be better off with an eight? Is that guy out there? I don't know. And what do we do in the striker position? So many questions. Every time I'm doing these videos, I feel like I'm bringing more questions than answers to you. But to try and give you, again, a gut feeling and answer what I think is going on, ultimately, do I think the fixture list will impact the transfer window and what Arsenal are going to do in the coming weeks? Maybe a little bit, but ultimately probably not because I don't think Arsenal, with all the great work they've done to get the squad in the position they're in, are going to ever feel forced and pressured to do deals if they don't think it's right for the long-term future. They're never going to think short-term and think, well, we need to get four world-class players in because we're not going to have players at their very best and fit and firing and ready to go for those opening five games. Or maybe they will, and maybe I've sort of miscalculated this all and these players should ultimately be fine and Arsenal won't panic again in the window. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I gave another transfer update around Onana, Xavi Simmons and Reese Nelson in this video here where I talked about the rumours, the reports and why I think actually these could be a really kind of it could be a really good opportunity to get Onana and Simmons for a combined 50 minutes. Go check out that video if you want and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet if you're interested in the content that I'm putting out around Arsenal. Many thanks. See you very soon.